and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode 244 for the week of uh, January 19th, 2015. My name is Ryan 16. Higgins. 16. 2016. My name is Ryan Higgins. <laughs> I was Ooh. paying attention when he was, <laughs> he was saying, here. I'm going to jump on his ass uh, if he says 15. Yeah, yeah, every week. Who is here <clears throat> with me this week? Uh, Brock Sager. Jim Jokish. And that's it. And that's it. Toby. Good night, everybody. <laughs> uh, Toby, as you may have heard us talk about last week, <clears throat> um, unfortunately, definitely going for surgery. So he's going to be out for, I don't know, the foreseeable future, I guess, at least a couple of weeks, I, I would assume. He's he's not mobile very much. Um, I'm not even sure when he's returning to work. So uh, uh, at TobyXI on Twitter, send him your well wishes. But everything seems to go well. He's going to catch up on video games and some comics and TV shows and stuff. So It's the vacation he always needed but never took, and now he has <laughs> to medically take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he'll still uh, need to... to like I could have like six months off and still be like, nope, still not even close. Uh, Did you even put a dent in? A dent, <laughs> <laughs> a small dent. Uh, I'm gonna catch up on Ryan's reading when I'm watching his house. I'm gonna start going through his box. <laughs> Charlie, hey, talk about that off the podcast. Uh, Charlie is got some kid stuff going on, and Bryce should be on next week. Next week, if you're a Marvel fan, it's gonna be a good week for you because we're gonna have talk about. Um, Return of Agent Carter, plus the talk of Secret Wars number nine, which came out this past week, which mm. we're going to wait for Bryce to come back so we can all talk about we it. sign off now. We can watch them all tonight. And uh, <laughs> we got like five weeks of Marvel number ones to catch up on. There hasn't been that many, but, you know, there's like eight, eight, eight books maybe, I think. So uh, next week's going to be a big Marvel week. But we got all sorts of stuff to talk about this week. It may be almost the end of January 2016, but we're still talking about 2015 because... There's a lot of stuff to still talk about from 2015. Um, past few, you just won't let that year die. <laughs> well, past few, past few episodes. Don't say die. We've had enough deaths this year. Mm. So Jeez, <laughs> cancer's just killing this month. Past few, uh, past few episodes, we've been talking a lot about the different, um, uh, uh, you know, sales here at the store. Uh, we did the November sales charts, which we ran a little bit late. Now we have um, the DC. I'm sorry, the Marvel. It's Marvel. We have all the industry. sales charts, we have the industry, industry sales charts, and uh, for December of 2015, which we're going to talk about really quick, but then we're going to get to the main topic, which is the uh, end of year 2015 sales and review of of the entire comic industry, yeah. um, which is pretty interesting. But why don't we why don't we play a game we always like real quick here? Uh, what do you, what do you think of the top ten books of? Uh, of, two, of um, December 2015. I'll say seven of the top ten are Star Wars. Not seven, but a number are. <laughs> Star Wars number 13 is at num- number three spot. Of course, Darth Vader number 14 is at number seven spot. That's Star Wars annual number one is the number nine book of the month, and wow. Darth Vader annual number one is the tenth book of the month. Four, bu- four, four books? Five books. Four books. Four, four yeah. books. So Justice wow. League's on there. Not in the top ten. JLA? Uh, no. Justice nope. Wow. Justice League got bumped out of the top 10. It did. It's wow. number 11. Number 11. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Batman's up there. Batman, number 47, is the number 5 spot. Uh, which Dark Knight book? Dark Knight Master Race, number 2, is the number 2 spot. Okay. So we have one. You're missing one. It's the big book. What? It's the, it's big this, book. This, it's, it's the big book right now. It's Well, it just ended, but it's the big book. Oh, uh, 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 Secret Wars. Yeah, ju- yeah, exactly. Secret Wars number, number nine. eight is the number one spot. Okay. Number eight. Number eight? Nine. Yeah, oh, nine shipped nine. in January, I remember. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, 2015. I'm did still... Seven, <laughs> did seven ship I've moved in December on. or did it sit? Or no. was that November? Uh, November, yeah. Number four actually really surprises me that it's this high, but it also had a bunch of um, uh, store-exclusive covers, which I think bumped it up quite a bit. Uh, I would have went with Star Wars on that one. Um, no, not Star Wars. It's uh, it's Walking a, Dead. No, it's a book that I think a lot of people. I don't know if I don't know if it's good. I haven't read it myself yet, but a lot of this is one of those things that I think a lot of people had had wished for for a long time. It's a, it's a it's a team up book. It stars two very popular Groot and Rocket Raccoon, a, a very popular character and a very popular set of characters. Both these have movie uh, movies are out there about these Superman, guys. Superman, Batman. No, two <laughs> two different worlds. It's the meeting, the first meeting behind five various street vigilantes <laughs> through interpretations of New York. I'm out. I don't know. 
One dresses like a giant bat. The other four are giant turtles. Do what can I? Oh my Ninja god! Turtles. There you go. Batman there you go. Batman TMNT number one is the number four book of the of the month with one hundred thirty four thousand wow. copies. Number six surprises the hell out of me because our review of this Marvel number one book was not very good. Don't say Red Wolf. No, no. I think that's way down the list. Um. <clears throat> uh, it, it features a cast of characters that had a hit motion picture. Guardians of the Galaxy. Fairly recently. No, it's the... It's the other one. It's the all-new Avengers? N- no, no. Jim was Jim, Jim had it. Guardians Guard- of Infinity. Oh, Guardians really? of Infinity. Really? Number one. Wow. Yeah, yeah, this is a number six book. And what makes that fucking crazy is that the number eight book, uh, the last one we haven't... Uh, it's a DC book. And Vision a, didn't make the list, huh? No. It's a very popular wow. character. There was a very highly publicized variant cover for all these books. She's going to star in the upcoming oh, Suicide Squad Harley movie. Quinn. There you go. Harley's that Little Black Book one. Harley's Little Black Book number one only had 92,000 copies for a number one Harley, and it had that thought. Th- it had four the black bag covers. So, so four official covers and then a sketch cover. Uh, well, there's a ton of those original sketch covers. Yeah. But I have no idea, how, and I really don't know, because I'm looking at these numbers, and none of these numbers for the DC books that had those are like – Overly inflated. Just like 27. Well, I shouldn't say that because Just League 47 does have about 10,000 copies on 46. Well, yeah, because that's the Jim Lee one. And that's the Jim Lee one. But that's but that's it. I thought it would have had way more. Well, no, because I think a lot of stores probably did what, what you did was they opened a bunch of them so people were able to buy them. But like they kind of gauged what they were going to have sold, or they just didn't even open them at all. I sold a disproportionate number of those books based on... Those variant covers. Uh, less. I'm not ordering nearly as high on the Batman v Superman ones they're doing for March because the the creators aren't as good. The, the Jim Lee one I am, but the rest oh, yeah. are not. So, and then, uh, uh, did we do number ten? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Number ten. I don't know. I already closed it. Doesn't matter what it was. Um, <laughs> it beat Justice League. That's all wow. that matters. Yeah. No. No. Nine and ten were Star Wars and Darth Vader at the end. Oh yeah. 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 But let's let's go to the big let's go to this big big list here now Brock I know you said you 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 think you saw some of this but but no, I don't I looked at the whole thing because I posted it and said I think we this is what Ryan wants to talk about yeah and I was like and don't then you, re- then you replied don't look at don't it don't look at it you cheater and I yeah. was like but I already looked at it to say it was okay but that was like two weeks ago so, so I this think is I the forgot annual it. this is the annual sales yeah this is the yearly wow so cool the, these are the this is the top. 10 books for the entirety of 2015 uh, with with estimates here, that, uh, thanks to Comicron.com. Uh, I'll, I'll get this out of the way. It's almost entirely all Marvel with the exception of one book by DC, one book by IDW, and one book by Boom Studios. Boom? Boom, IDW, and DC. Hmm. What are those books? And then, and then, and then once you guys think about them, we'll, uh, I'll explain what the deal is and, and why we won't see these again. Well, well let's, do, let's do the DC one. What's the DC number one book? Come on, it's obvious. For the year? Yeah. What number is it on the list? Number five. Wow. Yep. It's a Batman. Uh, Batman uh, was it Batman 40? No. No, this is, Bat- this is series. <clears throat> just, no, just, just issue number. Oh, issue number. Yeah. Oh, okay. And oh. every single book on here. On the top, the top twelve books are all issue number ones. So that's, I mean, oh, obvious. Wow. But Dark Knight three, Dark Knight three, number one at four hundred forty nine thousand copies sold. Now, of course, that is because of a lot of the retailer incentive covers or retailer exclusive covers. Sixty some odd stores had their own covers made <laughs> with a lim- with a minimum of, I believe, five thousand units per. So you could see why there's a you know, but they got a decent amount of Jim Lee covers. Well, they would get one Jim Lee cover, one, one? of the exclusive, the original sketch cover. It was one in five thousand. That's what it was for. What? Oh, the they the original the art cover. Yeah, but they didn't do the color one. No original art. Yeah, no, no, by no. Jim Lee. It's not color. No, no it's no. black and white. Wow. No, I'm saying, did they do an original, like a color no. variant? No. Oh, okay. No, he didn't do like a full painted cover or anything. Oh, okay. No, he only just did the, the black and white sketch. I mean, they're awesome looking, mm-hmm. but that's a $20,000 investment to get that cover. Jesus. I mean, you get all the comics well, and all the variants. What's, and the, it, what's the returns on I mean, what's the, can you return? No. <laughs> no. But you get a shitload of high end variants to sell to probably offset the vast majority of your costs. Uh. So. 
And then you're stuck on that. Now, <laughs> now, the IDW and the Boom book, we've talked about these books in the past. <clears throat> IDW. They're yeah. franchise books, aren't they? They both are. Yeah, yeah. But why are they on the top list of 2015? Because of Loot Crate. Because of Loot Crate. And as of now, um, none of the comics that go to Loot Crate are going through Diamond anymore. They're going to be handled independently. Thank God. So we won't see any more Loot Crate inflated. So no more inflated group? No more, no more Walking yeah. Dead? Oh, there will be. The, they'll be in there. They're just not handled by, handled by Diamond. Wow. So they won't be on the top charts I'm anymore. trying to think what Loot Crate comics I received this year. Well, number four um, is Orphan Black, number yeah. one. I got that one. I, I got that one, yeah. And number three is Bravest Warriors, number one. Yeah, that was, uh, that was like... One of the early crates from this year. Yeah, both oh. at 502,000 copies each. Sure. And 490,000 copies of those went to Loot Crate. Wow. So, uh, you know, I mean... I'm, so that's the only reason they landed on the list. Right, right, right. <clears throat> I'm about ready to drop my Loot Crate and go Marvel. <laughs> go, go, no, no, no. you got to go, go to the crate. DC collector ones. So my, my tweet <laughs> over the weekend was, Loot Crates are stupid. DC launches a loot crate. Well, fuck, I guess I'm signing up for this one. <laughs> it's pretty pricey. <laughs> Ryan Ryan the hypocrite yeah. jumps on it. <laughs> I'm, I'll try it. I'll try it once. I'll see Which, how it is. There's, there's two levels, right? There's Yeah, I just got the year one. I'll try it well, once. Well, Lane's Marvel is. stuff when he brings in is it's, it's great. And the shirts are fantastic, too. I mean, I still use the ones he gives me. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're, uh, not, they're not like cheap. They're not like, they're like the really ultra-thin I'll, material. They're I'll, a decent shirt. I'll so. try it for a year. We'll see how it is. Yeah. He'll try it for the rest of his life. <laughs> But let's start at the number 10 spot. Let, let's go up to the very, very wow. top. Okay. Number 10. <clears throat> this is, you're going to hear this name, you're going to hear this set of words a lot during everything we talk about the rest of this podcast. It's a very popular movie franchise and comic books and books and parts of a, Star Wars, parts of theme parks and, <laughs> Star and, Wars. And, and half of our paychecks for the foreseeable future are going towards it's this. Star Wars. It's a new publishing company. That they're just going to separate it out from Marvel and say but, but Star which, Wars made this much percentage. But we'll talk about that later. Which Star Wars book was, the number, came out was the number 10 spot? Well, they all came out this year, right? So what was number 10? S- not number one. Uh, it's not, all, they're all number one. No, 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 no. I mean, not, not, uh, not, uh, not, not the Star Wars book. Not that. Not all right. Those. So what Star Wars book was the Kanan. number 10 comic? Uh, no. No, did not make the top 10. Oh, thank God. Because I didn't yeah. like that. Um, it's Had 271,000 copies. Uh, no, that's actually, that's lower on the list. That's number 18. It'd be a I'd say Vader, it's a, Darth Vader. No, no it's Lando. No, no. Leia. Not Lando. Lando is further down. Leia. Princess, Princess Leia, Leia. Number one. Wow. Two hundred seventy-one thousand copies sold. That's number ten. That's number ten. Number nine. Wow. Uh, this is a traditional Marvel Universe comic. Obviously, this is part of the Marvel uh, relaunch. Secret Wars. Here that we have. No, no, no. Um, pretty popular character. Iron Man. Iron Man. Invincible Iron Man. Number one. Got yeah, two hundred eighty-two thousand copies sold. That just came out. The Brian Michael Bendis issue number one, number eight, at two hundred eighty-eight thousand copies. It's a very recent character for Marvel. Um, it's not Squirrel Girl. It's not Squirrel Girl, but you're on the right track. Ms. Marvel? Nope. Red Wolf? No. Other way. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I cannot tell you why this book sold as much as it did. Um, it has to be some crazy amount of variant covers or something. I don't know. Maybe an uh, insane amount of speculators. Oh, Spider Gwen? Spider Gwen, number wow. one. Number which, s- which series? Uh, the, 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 the first the, one? The, the, no, the new. The the new one. Oh, the, the radioactive yeah. Spider Gwen? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I believe so. I don't. I thought I bought. No, wait. I thought Spider Gwen, the first. I, think, I thought the first one because I bought that, that uh, Adam Hughes cover on that one. I can see that one. That one had, like, multiple covers. No, there was a lot more for the new one. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right, let's go. Number seven. Number seven. Um, I'm actually surprised this is that low. Um, this had 315,000 copies. It's that same good old uh, uh, brand we were talking about before. <laughs> what book? Chewbacca. No. You said it. Vader. Vader. Number seven. Vader I down actually, or Vader? No, just Vader. Vader. Nice. Um. I'm really surprised that's actually low. Well, I'll give you Vader Down because Vader Down is the number six book right above it at 410,000 copies, <laughs> selling selling almost 100,000 copies more than Darth Vader number one. And the reason is because 
of store exclusive variant covers. They yeah. did a ton well, of those. Also, also, I think because and more the, variants. Well, it tied into Star Wars, so you get your Star Wars numbers. People cross because it gets crossed. It's I ordered. Parts. I ordered way more Darth Vader number ones than Vader Down number ones. So the only reason this is higher in my mind, it has to be because of the store exclusive well, covers. I think the store exclusive covers do add into it, but a that was lot. a cro- a lot. But the, it's a big crossover between the main Star Wars book. It, it was labeled but as part Star one. Part Wars, yeah, but it wasn't just it wasn't just comic stores. Hot Topic. Had Star, no, no, I know, I know. Star Wars number fourteen is not selling four hundred and ten thousand copies. That's it, that would not increase. I mean, the current sales on are are half or are a quarter of what this is. There's it wouldn't. There's no way it would. It, it would get a bump. Well, didn't it also come not, out about this? Time? It came out about the time of the movie. It's it's store. I'm telling you, it's the store exclusive okay. variants is what is what caused this. It's the only thing. All right, well, we're at number five now. Right? Uh, five was no, Dark Knight. Four was five. Orphan Black. Three was Bravest Warrior. So we got our number two and our number one book what are they you should uh, know this number one star wars number one is star wars but what's number two come on it's the only other book secret wars number one secret wars, wars. number one at five hundred fifty thousand. Wow, just didn't even make them didn't even make the top 10 no <laughs> <laughs> shit I think did convergence I think, even i think bryce just had us uh, like is having a laughing <laughs> convergence is number work. one Squeezes in the top fifty at number fifty. Really? Wow. Yeah. We would, did really good I with that. Really call that squeezing in. Yeah, yeah it, it, it slipped right in. Um, That's what she said. Uh, Secret Wars nice. number one at one hundred and fifty-five. Uh, sorry, one hundred fifty thousand copies, and of course, Star Wars number one at one million. 73,000 wow. copies. That's because it had like 70 freaking variant covers. I think it was like 70 or 71 have, store, store exclusive variants. They have a Star Wars hardcover book of nothing but, but covers, covers yeah. for Star Wars number one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is it. <laughs> Absolute shit. And I ordered it. I know you did. Because that's the only way you're going to get all the covers. That's the only way I'm going to get all the covers. Just an insane amount of books. Um, Let's is that just the, is that the first book to hit the million mark in a long time? Geez, since, yeah, since the early nineties. Yep. yep. Since, like, Even the well, what was uh, the last one? I think the last one was X Men number one. The uh, yeah. I, I, the I Jim Lee the Jim, oh, the Jim Lee uh, three part well, the gatefold. No, no, because Spawn and Wildcats came after that, and those hit those hit those numbers. Yeah, Spawn hit high. Spawn numbers. was at least a million. Wildcats, I think, broke a million too. That was eight million. The the X Men number one was eight million. Is mm. the number I always hear thrown around. Death of Superman must have broke a million though. I'll have to go back and look. But it's a since the very early nineties. Yeah. It's, it's the highest. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Uh, let's go down to the <coughs> one thousandth book of <laughs> the, 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 2015. Now that one. The, now the that one squeezes in. That's that the one squeezes <laughs> in the top one thousand comics. What's the one thousandth comic? Is it a number one? It's not. It's a number 18. It's a Marvel comic. That's rare. Wow. The Marvel comic gets that high numbered. <laughs> that, 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 that had, I was going to say, that was, right, that was before freaking Secret War, because there's no way. Yeah. It's a popular oh. character. Is it even on the wall anymore? Not on the wall anymore. It didn't survive Secret Wars. It was part of the crossover. Wow. It was one of the end of, end of days, but not actually part of the book. 18. Ultimate Spider-Man. It's a villain. Oh, it's a villain. Magneto? Oh. Magneto. Really? Yeah, wow. so if you type the top thousand comics, 28,000... <laughs> Is that the one where they kill Sugar Man? I'll just curious. 20, <laughs> 28,000 copies will get you in the top 1,000 comics sold of 2015. Sold 28,000. Wow. So, 20, yeah. yeah. So let's go well, all... Let's rephrase. That was what Diamond shipped that's, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's correct. Not necessarily let's, let's see how many is in the bin. So no, absolutely yeah. correct. That is what Diamond sold, and I'll guarantee you, and I'll tell you this, I got a lot of copies of, of uh, Magneto <laughs> number 18 sitting in my dollar bin. <laughs> Um, because those those tie-ins did not those tie-ins the yeah. the um what do they call the um the last, last days, days. Tie-ins, yeah. tie-ins did not do well. All right, where are we going? Let's do our top ten graphic novels through Diamond. Yeah, two thousand graphic novels. Yeah, um, sagas on there. 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 And sagas on there. Of the five volumes of saga, which five volumes of saga are on this top ten list? One, two, three, four, and five. Are Is you kidding five me? Already out? Yeah. Wait, yeah. it, it takes five five of the positions? Yeah. yeah, just like in our top list. Our top ten, five were Saga. Wow. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Saga Volume yeah. 4. Never, was the hardcover on there? I've never uh, cracked a cover on Saga. Not in the top ten, okay. no. I've no, never cracked a cover on Saga. It's fucking good. <laughs> number four was the number one book, selling 46,000 copies. Number two 
I'm sorry, Volume 1 was the number two book, selling 45,000 copies. Number 5, Volume 5, was the number three book, selling 44,000 copies. Oh, we're still talking so about So those saga. guys are all right there. Volume 2 was the number seven, selling 31,000. And Volume 3 was the number nine book, selling 29,000. So it's fucking Brian K. Vaughn's world. We just live in it. <laughs> wow. Let's go to number 10. Okay, it's a... Uh, well, we might as well just talk about the same franchise again, because here we go. There we go. What is Star it? Wars trade. Star Wars Volume, volume 1 is the number Skywalker ten. strikes. Very surprised right. that that's actually this low. Yeah, sold 27,000 copies. I actually thought it'd be much higher than that. Well, it came out right at the end right of the year. Right at the end. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, because yeah. I mean, if you look at reorders on that, you've reordered it. Like three, three or four times Like already. three or four times already, yeah. and you need to reorder it yeah, again. again. Yeah, yeah. Um, number nine was Saga. Number eight Darth Vader? No, there's no other Star Wars on here. Okay. Um, it's the other book. That's Walking not. D- d- there you go. That's not Saga. <laughs> it's 23? No, this is volume one. Oh, one? Number <laughs> really? one. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Another 30,000 copies Walking, through Diamond. Walking Dead number one is still on the list. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Keep selling. Number seven again was Saga. Number six. Um, it's a character we all know and love, but it is an old book. It's a more recent printing of the book, but it's an old book. Oh, Killing Joke. Killing Joke. Look at that. Pulling that shit out of your ass. Number uh, six. Because, because they're relaunching the cart, uh, because they're going to the do the cartoon. The cartoon yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and everybody wants to read all the extra material. And, and stuff Suicide like Squad. Yeah, 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 up, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Killing Joke hardcover is uh, in the number six spot at 32,000 copies. Brock had Walking Dead Volume 23, mm-hmm. and that's the number five book at 33,000. And number four. This will be higher than number than number four, I believe, next year, or this year, two thousand sixteen. It's uh, same franchise. No, no, really. Yeah, it's uh, uh, Batman Endgame. It's a very popular comic. Nope. Okay, that's not. It's it. going to be a very popular movie. Uh, Suicide Squad. Nope. nope. Although that that could that could jump up there. No. Oh. Think think across think across. Uh, well, I was oh, going to say Guardians Net- of the Galaxy. No. 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 It's going to be a very popular movie this year. Think of across the yeah across the country. Now I was gonna say across the street, but now now they're across the country from DC. Marvel, Marvel. How many Marvel movies are coming out this year? Deadpool, Caps. Civil War, Civil War, Civil War. Yeah, Civil War. Oh, that's is right. Is the number the, four book? The, oh, the reorders. Forty-two thousand. No, it's just it's just a soft cover. Yeah, just really. Soft, yeah, yeah. Wow. forty-two thousand copies. Yeah, because everyone everyone was like before. Like, but the movie just has gonna have nothing to do with it. No, that the, doesn't no, matter. The announcement of the title, people started to come in yeah, and buy the crazy. back issues like crazy. Absolutely, like, crazy. the Civil War single issues went like skyrocketed. We got them on the wall. Yep. Wow. The best part was is everyone that number in. one. I like I, number one. The last number one I had that was a high grade. That one's got a little ding in it, so it's cheaper. But the last yeah. high grade I had it was seventy five dollars. The next one I put on the wall is gonna be a hundred. Uh-huh. In I got the Michael nuts. Turner covers at home. I need to bring them in. <laughs> I literally were throwing those in quarter bins or dollar bins I a remember. few years yeah. ago yeah. because it's like, yeah, nobody cares. Those are like five hundred dollars a well, pop like now the or something. Gauntlet was in quarter bins. Yeah, and, you know, I long mean, time. You know, at one time, yeah. you know, there, there there wasn't anything, and then they would do the Thanos reveal at the end of Avengers, and oh my god, Iron Man fifty five was shooting up the charts, and wow. So we have our look at the statistics of all comics so and graphic novels shipped that was to Diamond. One? What's that? Secret Civil War? Civil War is number four. And then Saga's... Three. All the... Saga was three, two, and one. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what was the number one for Saga? Uh, saga... What did it say? Saga four? Saga four? Right. Yeah. That's right. Sorry, I have to scroll down a thousand listings before I get to it. Yeah, because five uh, just came out before. I need yeah. to borrow those trades. Four was <laughs> one, one was two, five was three, yeah. two was seven, three was nine. See, that's yeah. when you start talking, I got confused. When yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Blah, 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 blah. So, one here, of our listeners, make a chart and post it on Twitter, please. Here's some, here's some, here's some numbers. Okay, now the top. So, 2015 has been seen by a lot of people as a very interesting year because you have Convergence and Secret Wars that did well, respectively, and Secret Wars very well, um, but also have kind of caused some some floundering in the numbers of Marvel and DC sales. Um, it, it kind of caused a backlash. Well, DC has had a rough year, and, and I think we talked about that email I got from Dan, 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 Dan Didio and Jim Lee about... Um, kind of being a transitional year for them. Yeah. They got a lot of stuff planned for 2016. Uh, Marvel, I mean, they dominated with Secret Wars. Don't get me wrong. And no, no, a no, lot no, of no, these no. Marvel number one Wait, books no, no. are doing very no, let's, well. Let's be honest. They dominated with Star Wars. Well, yes. 
if you take and now end of year especially if you take star wars completely out, completely out of the equation even with the marvel relaunches they're not that far ahead of of, of dc of dc yeah. including no, star, star wars has what seven percent they're like 10 percent like, like star 11%? wars is like 10 percent of the market yeah yeah it's it's insane between the four books that they release it's wow. it's yeah it's it's a year ago i mean insane. a year ago star wars wasn't even on the freaking charts I no mean, I mean, the Marvel Star Wars books were were in the quarter bin also. Yeah, no, they'd as, been good. Aside from no. the final issue and the first five or six no, issues. No, they'd been going up. No, they'd been going up the but, last couple of years, especially with the hype for the movie. They'd well, been the going up. the hype for the movie. But, I mean, prior to that, I mean, the, the, they had nothing. I mean, no, they're yeah, really, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. Wow. Just, it's, um, it's just amazing. So you could say, really you know, good, the, the books yeah. have obviously increased quite a bit in price. So um, I'm going to talk about the, the dollar amounts that these books sold. But then I'm going to talk about the unit amounts because it, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. Um, the top 300 comics each month. So that doesn't include every comic, but that is the vast majority of comics mm-hmm. sold. Um, or a total of $353 million in the United States. This is just physical copies sold to comic book stores. Three hundred fifty million. What's that? Three hundred fifty million. Uh, three hundred fifty-three million. Fifty. Jesus. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, all comics sold to comic shops is three hundred eighty-eight million. So there is a uh, there is there is that number. Um. So obviously, with the price increases, variant cover. You know, variant cover is a sold for cover price, so that's different. But you know, you have price increases. A lot of four ninety-nine books. Most books are three ninety-nine now. Image bumped a lot of their books to three ninety-nine. Yeah. You have um. That's a 13% increase over the dollar amount from last year, 44% increase over five years ago, and 83% increase over 15 years ago. So when people are saying, man, comics are doing good, they're doing good, and this is why. But dollar amount's weird because that doesn't necessarily mean mm. a ton because higher price point, you're paying well, more you for have, it, right? You have a higher price point, plus you also have some of the inflated numbers from like the loot crate right? Bumps. You know, those are, I mean, that's... To five hundred thousand copies of a of a title that's it, you know it is close to a million extra comics because of yeah. loot crate. Um, so I'm not gonna yeah these numbers may look a little smaller next year. Um, but people bought comic books last year. Uh, mm-hmm. you know I don't know what to say because while so- there is a a softening in a lot of stuff, whether it's variants, whether it's just. Very few people are buying line wide. Most people only buy a handful of titles, but we have a lot of new faces in the store. Yeah. Um, this, you know, the Marvel books have been very soft going ish- going into issues two, three, and four. Uh, the DC books right now have just been stabilizing. Nothing's been going up or down. They've just been saying just you know nothing's the, selling the, great yeah. except for Batman and Justice League and and Harley to a degree. Um, Harley's less for us than the National, but. Uh, you know, you sell a few extra for the variants. The independent stuff right now has been very stagnant for us. And this all sounds bad. But store-wide, it was our best year. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's like this disconnect between what we're seeing and what the actual numbers are. And the thing is, numbers don't lie. At the end of the day, we're selling more comics. And the comic book industry is definitely selling more comics. Because all comics ship to comic stores... And again, if you are not selling the vast majority of your books, you're going to go out of business. Mm-hmm. And since more comic stores opened in 2015 than closed, they were up like 2%, I believe, as wow. far as numbers of stores, which is great, right? Yeah. You opened a couple dozen new stores this year and, and very few closed comparatively. Um, the vast majority of these books are being sold in some fashion. You know, you could probably say a couple percent are not being sold, but no. 98 million comics being sold, which is up 6.5% over last year, over 2014. Um, if you count just the top 300, it's up 8%. If you go back five years, it's up 30%. And if you go up 15 years, it's also, I mean, 29%. It's just, just shy of 30%. Wow. And so... <laughs> You just reel it all in, boys. We're yeah, living the dream. Yeah, you're, you're looking. You're looking there. You know, even though we've had the dips from the New Fifty Two and the third Nobody's Marvel, going to have dips. It doesn't well, matter. And the third Marvel relaunch is not as strong. And no. And you know, Image hasn't had that. I mean, they haven't had a, a blockbuster. Sog is yeah. a couple of years old now. Walking mm-hmm. Dead's still doing huge, but it's been very stable. Mm-hmm. You have Paper Girls, but we'll see. Image sales are up a ton. All right. And we're still seeing a thirty percent increase over just pre New Fifty Two, and that that shows you just how how mm-hmm. strong the comic yeah. sales are now. Um, yeah, it's just it's just insane. Um, the the top uh, 
three hundred graphic novels is uh, just shy of ninety million dollars, which is basically flat with last year. I wonder how much I put in that one. Uh, all <laughs> comic, half. all comic books, graphic novels, and magazines sold through Diamond is five hundred and seventy nine million dollars, which wow. is up seven percent from last year dollar wise. So yeah, there's just no you know man that that must be a great monopoly. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's just no denying it. Comic book sales last year were fantastic. And people may think, oh, I bought less. I, I can't believe it, but I don't. Numbers don't lie. They, wow. This is just well. I think it's it's like you said. I mean, I think people people who come in who who come into the stores kind of with DC's kind of less par of a year, you know, with them moving in convergence and all that stuff, and Marvel's kind of third relaunch number ones. Regular readers are very kind of tightening what they're buying, so they're really focusing on what they're buying. But we're also getting new faces into the say, comic he, store. Uh, I was talking, you know, earlier earlier this year, earlier last year. I'm sorry that you know he had speculators coming in, getting you know cherry picking and taking all the Marvel covers. I mean, all the Star Wars covers and stuff like that too. So you know, it, it doesn't really matter, Marvel or DC. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna want the variants. Well, that I mean, th- yeah, the <clears throat> variants were high this year. Yeah, I mean the yeah. var- variants are. That's the number I need. That's the number we need to have. How many variant covers were there this year <laughs> versus last year, and what were the dollar amounts on those and the units sold on those? Well, again, if you look at something like uh, I don't have I don't have the numbers back up here, but look at any of the Marvel books issues two, three, four, oh, five God, comparatively the, the, to one. The drop the, is the, the fall is pretty dramatic, and yeah. especially it's like looking at a male arousal chart. <laughs> Come that's nice. <laughs> come January numbers, February numbers. We'll actually have five, six issues on some of these, and and um, the beat has a um, comics beat uh, has a very good breakdown of of charting a full year's worth plus going back like five, ten years. Yeah. Um. So I'll be very curious to see the numbers on those guys. Uh, as far as com- uh, top publishers of 2015. Uh, Marvel, Marvel Comics, obviously number Marvel, one. DC, sorry, Star sorry. Wars. Mar- that, that, that's uh. Marvel, Star Wars, Disney. Sorry, <laughs> oh, it's Marvel, DC, Star Wars. Well, so you have you have Marvel at thirty eight percent dollar share, forty one percent unit share. Uh, DC at twenty five percent dollar share and twenty seven percent unit share, and that's definitely a big increase for Marvel over DC from last year. Uh, but again, you take ten percent, you, you roughly ten percent of yeah. the industry at this point is Marvel, and those numbers are much closer. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no. Yeah. So, you, you, you take out the Star Wars books, and yeah, it's yeah. they're not thirty eight; they're twenty eight. Right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's a have huge Marvel, DC, Star, Star Wars, Wars, Star Wars, Disney. Yeah. You know, together. <laughs> so, Image uh, just shy in dollar share, and just over in unit share of that ten percent mark, which is just incredible. Because if you go back five years, just pre New Fifty Two, yeah. they were like four percent, three percent. Image was always, like Image has been steadily. It's been insane. Yeah, yeah. like increasing. Yeah, Image has been huge. Dark um, Horse took a dip though. Uh, so IDW, oh, I'm sure coming in at five point five nine percent dollar share, four point eight seven unit share. Dark Horse at three point seven nine and three ten respectively. Boom at two point two eight, two point four six. Dynamite at two and one point eight. Dark Horse used to be um, a lot higher because they had the Star Wars franchise when they lost. That's, that that's off. definitely that's definitely a part of it. Um, yeah, Dark Horse and Dynamite uh, were down a point over last year. IDW and Boom were roughly the same. So. Uh, I know coming into this year, Dynamite, IDW, and Boom, or I'm sorry, at least Dynamite and Boom, I know have announced that they're going to be cutting back the amount of titles that they publish, um, which is good. I'm still not ordering hardly anything by either of them. <laughs> I, there's a big conversation, and I, I, I this got a lot of um, – our conversation did not get a lot of publicity, but uh, – Big Bang Comics out of Dublin. Uh, I'm not friends with those guys. He Dublin, California. No, no, Dublin, Dublin, oh, Ireland. Ireland. Oh, yeah, no. yeah, the yeah, pond? yeah. The the real Dublin. Yeah, um, <laughs> they uh, they had a big long uh, list of their their books for on Twitter for 2015, along with their you know how the books are doing, and they they had a huge series of tweets about Marvel and DC, kind of what they feel they're doing wrong and i can't disagree with most the majority of what they're saying um and then just got picked up by a lot of a lot of comic press over the over the week yep. um what were some of the the, the cherries well it's just you know that that there's too many books you know when you have something in the new 52 it i felt like it worked once it's yeah. hard marvel's done it like three times and there's again the 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 general sales on these titles are 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 pathetic 
and it's not just DC. I mean, it's more it's DC as well, right? I mean, I, I mean, yeah. you can't have you can't have a store that's a comic book store selling ten or fifteen copies or less of what should be a major title. There used to be like, well, eh, it's a Marvel comic; you're going to sell at least twenty copies. No, I'm I'm ordering three, four copies of some Marvel comics. We're a little more DC heavy here, so my my low end on DC tends to be eight to 10 Mm -hmm. but you know that said it should be 20 25 all right yeah but people are buying stuff because it's less individual comics being sold it's but there's so many more titles Mm -hmm. that people are buying just all the titles of one character a ton of different (coughs) stuff (coughs) right yeah it's not everyone buys batman and superman and spider-man and captain america it's this person buys oh cops ambulance fire trucks everything they found you, Brock. All of Sunnyvale's on fire, I think. No, my ass just exploded. Um, so. <laughs> so hopefully, sorry guys, hopefully yeah, you can hopefully hear me over those. Hopefully hazmat people too. <laughs> hear me over the sound of those sirens because it's pretty loud. Um, well, you know. I mean, like before, you only had the, you know, you had maybe one, maybe two Batman's titles. Now you have, you know, a, a half a dozen or more Batman yeah. titles, half a dozen or more Superman titles, at least three Wonder Woman titles, you know. so And, and they've lost <laughs> a lot of the big creators over to Image and a lot yeah. of these titles. Marvel and DC, they're, you know, some are good. But there's just no push for them. There's no, you know, yeah. there's no groundswell. There's no support. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's no doubt in my mind that Marvel and DC are already looking at numbers and thinking, how do we relaunch again? How do we get those number one sales again? And man, you fucking don't. You're like, you have to build quality titles from the ground. You can, ha- you have to understand that some books are only going to sell fifteen, twenty thousand copies. The, if you axe books and kill them over and over and over again, it's just it's. Well, I mean, the thing is, is like okay, so if you I mean, look at DC, you, the fifty-two, right? They're like we have fifty-two books, and and they went, <clears throat> and some of the books worked, some of the work, books were fantastic, others failed miserably. But that's the thing is, is you kind of have that nice space now where you can rotate in things and kind of you know yeah. test the waters and stuff like that like um you know the green lantern core it's like they're doing the edge of oblivion i'm like why isn't this just green lantern core you know it's, it's like mi- the lost army it's like another miniseries another miniseries, another miniseries. Yeah. when it should have just continued as the green lantern core where like in the same thing like swamp thing like it's now a six issue mini right but it was such a really solid title going in you know gotham by midnight it's gone 12 issues you know, it can be a longer running series, but yeah. you know, it's they they kind of they have this open ended thing. Oh, they're all ongoing series, but you know, it's well. Here, let me let me let me read um let me read uh my guys over at Big Bang were saying. I'm not sure if this is John or Bruno or one, I'm not sure who's who writes their main. I think it's a combination of a few of them, but uh, good guys over there. I'm actually going on a honeymoon. I'm going to go visit them. I'm very excited. So nice. Um. Uh, let's see. It says a t-shirt in our store. You should get it for me. Uh, maybe I will. <laughs> they're, they're talking about Red Wolf. How Red Wolf uh, was their lowest selling Marvel title on one of a lot of people's radar, and they liked it. Um, the numbers on this are generally surprising. It used to be that a top two book, meaning Marvel and DC, uh, would guarantee a certain plateau of sales. We've been talking about how DC books have been selling less and less, and now Marvel is there too. It's not a quality thing. Uh, a lot of these are low selling. A lot of these low selling books are genuinely really good and enjoyable. It's a numbers thing. How many books can today's market generally support, and at what price point, and what gives when something has to give? We're honestly looking at the sales of some of these Marvel books and checking our head in disbelief, but there's so many of them. And to make matters worse, so many being launched on the same time, on the same day. Uh, it's hard to make an, uh, an analogy to any other industry as comics are unique, but this is ridiculous. Um, you know, there's no effort anymore to build a sustainable fan base. It's throwing stuff at the wall and praying something sticks. You know, the goo goes on for a while. You could find this. There's, there's a ton. He, he keeps going. He keeps going. Um, you know, this has been comics for quite a while now. This is not necessarily something new. It's just been, I think, a lot more exaggerated recently. You go back to the early days of Marvel under Joe Quesada. That was his thing. He said, we're going to throw 50 things against the wall and see what sticks. Not necessarily a bad idea, but... When you throw 50 things against the wall and 50 things don't stick, yeah. that's a concern. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I look at a book like Doctor Strange, which is doing phenomenal here. It's already way down in the sales charts mm-hmm. nationwide, and it blows my mind that it's doing so poorly. Um, I look at Prez or Omega Men. 
that we do, we sell a disproportionate number. It's not a huge seller, but mo- the average store is selling like four copies of those books. We're selling like 20, mm-hmm. right? So we're selling a disproportionate number of those titles at, at, as other stores. Yeah. But on the flip side, I don't know. I sell like 30 copies of Uncanny X-Men. I'm sure the average store sells like 75, right? So, you know, it's... It's. You're, I'm never quite sure how these things match up. You know, obviously every store is going to be different. Yeah. There is a lot of talk about. Well, just more miniseries. Just have things be limited runs. I'd rather have a great twelve issue run of Omega Men than nothing at all. And that's that's cool. But you need the support of the big titles. We yeah. for Marvel and DC, those big titles can't even hold on to readers. Well, well, the thing is, is like... You can have your bottom 20% always rotating, and it always is, (laughs) but it can't be your bottom 75% always. That's the scary part. You have to have the vast majority of your books are very stable. The thing is, is you have to break it down in, in the sense of like, Batman is carrying us and Justice League is carrying our line, right? These two titles, especially for DC, are the biggest yeah. selling. They're, our, yeah. they're the ones yeah. that are carrying yeah. us. Yeah. Then, you know, you have the two bottom feeders, right? The polar opposites. These are the two worst books that we fucking have. Lobo. Like Lobo, <laughs> Batmite, um, you know. And the thing is, is those, those are your two designated rotation spots. But everything in between, you need to have this decent cutoff, not at the 75% mark if it's not selling X in a high number, it's not worth it. It needs to be more towards the 25%. No, yeah. You know, a quarter of your line is the rotating portion right. if, of the if, line. If you have 60 titles and you have 10 to 15 titles that are kind of always rotating in and out, that's, you know, I mean, that's fine. Maybe, well, I mean, maybe yeah. even less. Maybe 10. Maybe 10 books. But, man, how, how can you not have a stable, good-selling Wolverine comic in 2016 nope. or 15 or 14 or 13, for that matter. Yeah. Man, even just a, anything with that guy's name on it. And it's not that there's not an audience for it. It's just they, they've done such a bad job of killing that book. How does DC have, you know, the Batman books tend to do pretty well, but how do you have a Green Lantern book that fails so spectacularly after a decade of Jeff yeah, Johns dominating it. dominating the entire industry. And you said it last week. They've gone out of their way to tear down, you know, what everything that Jeff Johns did, too. Yeah, I, I, I you know, it, it, it boggles my mind, and I don't know what you do, because I love the cool, weird books, right? Mm-hmm. It used to be, oh, the cool, weird book got 50 issues run, and that was a weird because it was this thing. And now it's like, oh, the cool, weird book gets eight issues or six issues, right? And that's it. I don't know what you do at this point. And yet it's, Green Lantern's still going. So, <laughs> Well, I think, the, I think the difficult thing is, is like, you know, when you go into a shop and you're looking at a new release wall and you see a number one and it's a character that is not a top-tier character. It's maybe a CD-list character. You know, the creative team on it's decent. It's like, do you really start getting that book when you know it's most likely just going to be a miniseries? And, you know, then you have to base it on, well, do I like this character? Do I like this writer, artist, whatever? And then you're kind of basing it off of how you feel about those things and whether or not you're going to buy it. And if it's something that you're like, well, I can just wait for the trade. If it's only going to be eight issues, I'll just buy the trade when it comes out, right? It's yeah. like people – because nowadays people, especially with floppies, you know, they're like, yeah, I could get it. But, you know, trade sales have been going up because I think people don't mind waiting. Yeah, well, you know? uh, trade sales were kind of well, – I mean, again, industry-wide, they were flat. For us, they're pretty flat. It's just different things are selling. Yeah, yeah. And you have the big things that sell a lot, and you have everything else that doesn't. So you know, and like some things, um, what were we talking about? That should have just been a a straight to graphic novel miniseries. I can't remember what it was. I was talking with somebody about like very little should be straight to graphic novel because there's uh, very little where that really yeah. works. Um, yeah. So I mean, you know, I'm not. I the comics are mostly fine. There always can be you know ways to fix it. You know, with the small press guys, um, you know, I, I, I talk a lot about this on Twitter. Pre-order, 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 pre-order. Did you um, say pre-order? The amount of titles that I order zero copies for or have ordered a couple copies of the number one and cut to zero 
or our sub only is the vast, vast majority of independent books. Mm-hmm. I carry a lot of independent books on the wall, a couple copies, but if a book launch isn't number one and I don't sell a single copy of number one within a couple weeks, that's that, that's it. That's it. <laughs> the death mm-hmm. of that book. And what am I supposed to do? You know, <laughs> what do you want me to do? Well, the thing is, you, I mean, there's only so much space in any given. And there's only so store. much money. Right, yep. you know. Well, that's the thing is, is I mean, if your shop has a lot of space for independence, then yes, you might need to order give stuff a little bit more of a try. But yeah, money is a factor. If it's not going to sell, then there's no point in stocking it. But yeah, it's like I mean, I've gone to plenty of stores where it's, you know, the the amount of independent books they have is tiny because the space they have is tiny. Sure. You know, and if it's something that you might be interested in and you're like, you find it randomly somehow and it's been out for three months, you're like, can I get this? Probably not. Yeah. You know, with Marvel, again, I, I don't mind a few extra copies of Justice League or Flash or... or with Marvel? Uh, oh, with Marvel and... Sorry, with Marvel and DC. <laughs> I don't mind a few extra copies of Guardians of the Galaxy or Flash or, or, or Green Lantern or Superman or Batman or, or X-Men or Spider-Man because they will sell at some point. I can throw them in the back issue bin. We'll move them down the road, blah, blah, blah. Independent books are very tough because everything gets collected. Everything goes away. Everything is a mini series, random creators that don't really have a big fan base. So very difficult to to you to, know to break into. Yeah. yeah, and it's really tough. So if there's <coughs> books you like, I mean, I have a bunch of guys that get a ton of independent books. Um, and if you like yeah. stuff, I mean, we don't even stock Spawn or Savage Dragon. No, all, and I haven't but, not for years. It, but you have a decent amount. You have a couple subscribers yeah. for Savage Dragon and yeah. a couple yeah. people for Spawn. Yeah, nothing we, wrong with Savage Dragon. Yeah, I hadn't ordered a copy of Spawn, <laughs> and I more. asked him about Spawn today. <laughs> I hadn't ordered a copy of Spawn in like six years, and I have two new subscribers for it. So, yeah, nice. people got to sign up for them, you know, because that's a book that there's just I just have no there's just no interest. in. I would have bought it because it had because Eric, Eric Larson is doing the art right now for Spawn. That's why I asked him about it. But I mean, pre-order if he, if he doesn't, you know, if he doesn't stock it, then he doesn't stock it. I, it's not something I, that I'm going to go on my way. You know, if it's there, it's there. So, yeah. and uh, I, I know it's kind of a, a lame way to shop sometimes on it, but I, I do pick and choose on the uh, yeah. depending on the cover art and stuff. Yeah. So. It's just the DC and Marvel. I mean, they have so many titles of Batman. It's so many titles. I just wish some of them would do a little better. Um, uh, Marvel has so many titles of Guardians of the Galaxy and and uh, all the other books. It's I, I I wish there were just some more longevity to them. I know they like doing the miniseries right now, but I like you know I, I enjoy the you know. <laughs> Batman 608. You know, I, I enjoy, you know, Mar- I enjoy that Justice League is up to like number 42, 45 or something like that right now. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd want to see a, you know, a longer continuity, a longer story, not another reboot. Well, you know? I, mean, I, I mean, there's something to be said that, that DC's in, 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 almost at the 50. I mean, they're hitting 50 this year <laughs> in a lot of their titles. Yeah. And there's something to be said about that because now it's, you know, it's one of those things where. As collectors, you're like, holy crap, this book stood the test of time and is actually going at going well, the distance. 50 used to be an early death. Now it's unheard of. Yeah. So yeah. Only 50 issues. So, no, I I, I hope we have a, a, a time as we go on here where, where um, you know, we end up with, with these books just continuing for years and we don't end up where they get killed off immediately because it's just, you know, I want these books to have higher numbers. The whole, you know, we've talked about this in the past. The the idea of books relaunching and new number ones being good for you know getting new create new people on board. There is a point where that does kind of dry up, though. That's it, a marketing lie. It, well, I don't <laughs> necessarily think so, but it's fake sales. Variant covers are not real sales. They're 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 not permanent. They're very temporary sales. So you you have to you have to assume that. There are no new readers to a lot of these books because when they drop down to where they were before or lower, very quickly you're just losing. You, you, you're, you're the boost up for that number one will not sustain the loss of sales over the course of the next year or two. So that's that. Yep. Let's uh, let's move on to a few things here. Let's talk about some TV before we get to some questions. <laughs> how many episodes? How many shows were you missing? <laughs> we are uh, recording on Tuesday. Oh, you're uh, recording on Monday and the 19th, Tuesday. The 19th. You got two podcasts. So you well, record- 
this podcast is being recorded on um, on a Tuesday, the nineteenth, uh, before the uh, West Coast airing of Agent Carter season two, also the return of Flash, also the um, DC Films presents the Dawn of the Justice League. I would love to see that right half an hour special about uh, it's going to show the first Wonder Woman footage and. Um, and uh, we're going to get some stuff with the Suicide Squad and a special and the special of um, uh, the Legends of Tomorrow. The miniseries starts on Thursday following the premiere. The, or sorry, the return <laughs> of Arrow on Wednesday. Fucking hell. Oh, <laughs> you're never going to catch up on your sweet TV. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, and then tonight also I forgot um, uh, Flash. B- before. um before Agent Carter, we also had the uh, 75th anniversary of Captain America, Captain America special that's, right. that's on ABC uh, that it did announce, uh, that, because it aired in the East Coast, so we did kind of catch this before the recording, um, that it announced the return of of Steve Rogers as Captain America, um, uh, which is weird that this is where the announcement comes from, because the solicitations for the Marvel Free Comic Book Day already spoiled this. Nice. It, it says the return to Captain America. Um, but he's got a new costume and a new, sh- and a new version so you, of an old shield. So you and I were looking at the costume it prior is, to the movie, uh, tra- prior to the uh, the podcast. It's, what you- it's terrible. <laughs> and and the shield is terrible. I, I, you know what? It's a triangle shield. Uh, I don't mind the triangle shield. I, you know, it, it's just, uh, yeah, the the it looks like a shield like the captain. You know, when he was the captain, he should have used it then. It, it, it really it doesn't. I mean, I, the triangle shield's fine. You know, you want to do the, the the classic, but it. I don't like I don't like the design on it. No, the the, the shield itself is, or the shield itself. I don't hate the um, the uh, uh, costumes. The a little rough. Costume is <laughs> terrible. It looks like a bad version of like the ultimate costume. Like, kind of wants to try yeah. to be superhero meets track meet. You know, meets track meets. You know, I don't know. It doesn't. It and doesn't. If he's using, my question is: If he's using this shield, where's the adamantium vibranium alloy uh, uh, mix shield? So. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'll say Uru, Uru. He's also Uru in there too. Yeah, it does not look good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the heck. I, I don't know what the heck they're thinking. I think it looks terrible. Um, but you know, uh, Steve Rogers is back, obviously, because the the Sam Wilson book's doing terrible. Um, but we, we knew he wasn't going far. Yeah. Next week, uh, again, besides all the Marvel stuff, I'm sure we will have a little bit of time to talk about some of the DC stuff. So we'll we'll definitely do that. Uh, we're gonna get to a few questions here. Before I do, um, I did want to just uh, let everyone listening know that a milestone happened this past week. Uh, we reached our one millionth download. Wow. Of the Comic Conspiracy podcast, A little golf clap for you there! Yay! Uh, uh, this <laughs> this um, this podcast between our what I say two hundred and what what two forty four forty four has been downloaded now over a million times between all the episodes. There are some poor saps listening right or, or that we'll get to this episode eventually. They're downloading our first episode as we speak and listening i'm pimping it across the world as i travel so <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're you're crazy if if you did if you're doing this i don't know why you would listen to us talk about shit from five years ago in the comic industry that's like a million years ago in the real world but yes one million downloads thank you everyone thank you guys yeah thanks yeah yeah it's a it's a, it's, it's quite a milestone it's a milestone <laughs> So this is the part where normally we go and um, talk Throw about the boxing gloves and beat the crap out of each other. Talk, oh, about, the, wait, talk about the questions. Yep, tweeter questions. Uh, however, uh, in, a, in, a, in a hilarious bit of editing, uh, I have seen now that the Suicide Squad, the new Suicide Squad trailer, has launched while we have been recording this episode. Nice. So through the magic of um, of of the computer and internets i'm going to pause this recording we are going to watch a suicide squad trailer and then we'll be back in like two seconds to talk about the suicide squad trailer so hold on tight nice and holy yeah. shit did you see that crap we just watched the suicide squad the trailer okay so, so first of all holy i am sh- we had our oh. teaser this is now the trailer yep. i am now out 
Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna <laughs> be a long tagged. it's gonna be a long he's seven out. months. But I am out. Ryan's been hit by the dodgeball. So uh, suicide suicide squad trailer. Um, yeah, we just watched it, so I, I'm done. I'm not gonna uh, watch anymore. So that said, fantastic. <laughs> he, he's out. But he's definitely in. <laughs> oh, I'm in. I'm in. I'm just out as far as more trailers go. Uh, wow, that was really fucking good. That was awesome. That, that was yeah, so awesome. We had to watch it twice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, you know, there's going to be comparisons made to a little get Guardians of the Galaxy. You know what? They're going, get, they're going with uh, you know what this this is this trailer was unique. You know, it had the had a classic song in it. I'm not going to spoil it for anybody because uh, I want you to watch it. But well, the last wow. trailer, I mean, it 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 worked. It worked for me. It, oh, it yeah. did. I mean, this well, the, wow. The last trailer had a had a a classic song in it. It was it was just redone for the trailer. But um, I can't remember who the artist was in the first trailer. Yeah, the it I was the it was the um, well, I started a joke. <laughs> I can't yeah. remember who it's by. I, I, I I'm like but, totally blank and leave on the, but, the wow. of the first trailer. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, using, you know, a, a, a well, it's, it's not a spoiler for the song. I mean, it's Bohemian Rhapsody by the Queen. Uh, by by the Queen. By, by the, Queen. By the Queen. Um, <laughs> she did a uh, version of Bohemian by Queen. Rhapsody. Uh, uh, it's, it's, the lyrics fit the fit the trailer very well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, Harley is awesome. Do you think you want to bump your orders of that Harley Quinn statue now? <laughs> well, you get some. Especially you, if she's bending over. You definitely get a lot more Harley, uh, kind of get more personality. You get in more Harley. You get more Joker. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I think, I think my, I think the, uh, I think what I liked most about the trailer was the going through. So he shoots people. He looks like a crocodile and eats people. <laughs> he burns people. Yeah. Possessed by a witch. And this is just crazy. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, Yes, <laughs> I I think we're going to get a little bit of every version of the Joker in this because uh, you, you know we've seen the 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 kind of the the jar little stuff we've seen before, but then there's a shot in there where he's totally right out of that Alex Ross picture. Yeah, yeah, he's got the black, the black suit and the white tuxedo on, yeah, going and black everything. Tuxedo so. with the white with the white flower. Yeah. Well, and, the, um, the, there was the 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 <laughs> original Batman Michael Keaton reference to I want to show you my toys. Yeah, I can't wait right. to show you my toys. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm. Oof, that was a good trailer. That That's was good. good. So, I mean, Guardians was on the soft side of PG-13. There's a little bit of swearing, but this, this is probably going to be on. This is definitely going to be on the harder yeah. side of PG-13. Yeah. I'm, I'm. I understand why it's not going to be R. Uh, I would like it to be R, but I mean, you did you can, can get away with it. But you can squad do a lot in PG-13 now. And not yeah. cross, cross over into yeah. that R rating. You know, I mean, the R rating is mainly kind of. X amount of violence to blood and yeah, nudity. There's, nudity there's not going to be blood and nudity and, and all that this. stuff, right? Um, but no, I mean, I, I just, I mean, I'll watch it again a couple more yeah. times. But. No Batman though. I thought we would have seen Batman. I, no, I think they're they're going to hold off. I on think that. they're going to hold off on that because yeah. I think that they're I, because I think it has something. It if if DC does it right. Uh, Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice will build us to something. And then the Suicide Squad movie will give us a little bit right, more right. until we get to what Wonder Woman was was yeah. the next one. Yeah, Wonder Woman's next. Yep. Yeah. So I think that I think that if they're smart, they're going to do a building. But I'm telling you this much: it's August this year, my birthday. I'm watching as much as I fucking possibly can. <laughs> probably this. Daddy, we ha- can I we go now? And hey, Mitch, you seriously <laughs> need to plan your trip out here for when that movie comes out, so we can go with all of us to see it. You love Star Wars early because your kid wouldn't leave. You should gonna go. To, you gonna take the kid to see this? I'm not gonna take my kid to see Suicide there Squad. You go, there what you, you go. <laughs> Jeez, he's only four. Raise him right. Raise he'll him right. He'll be fine. He, he can. He can. He can deal with it. He can handle it. He can handle it. <laughs> um, Except when my son goes home and starts laughing like, <laughs> whoa, Jesus. freak his mom out. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Man, yeah, no, oh, God. That, that was great. Well, okay, okay, so and I don't we're know. So but- close to Batman movie Superman, it's right around the corner. It's just like let, it's just over two months away. Oh, my God. What, what I really <laughs> liked is they they took that dark kind of gritty tone um, with when they did the logos and stuff, and they put in like those colorful like police siren looking things and like neon color like the Harley the the colors Harley Quinn has in her costume and stuff like that, and kind of animated the logo. A little bit, like for the DC Peel and for uh, the actual Suicide Squad, you know, tag. Like I liked that color scheme, and with the the posters that came out, 
uh, or the preview of the poster that came out uh, what last week? Or yeah, get, like get oh the, the oh yeah, yeah we didn't talk about that. The Suicide Squad poster is fucking amazing. Yeah. Like the like the 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 the, the, the very like kind of lo-fi you know this yeah. is very like the very like the, the drawn the hand-drawn one yeah. so yeah. oh incredible looks like a five-year-old did it yeah talented and it works but yeah no i know i mean yeah, like harley did it you yeah. know so. <laughs> well it's no it's it's very it's very uh it's very modern art well the thing is is i, I think it. it's i think it's a good way to go because it's very you can brand that like those those things you can brand and you know just that like i can see each of those characters plastered on a t-shirt Right, just one face on a T-shirt or one face on a poster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I need to go. Yeah, when we're done. We're done with this. I need to go watch that again. <laughs> <laughs> you should watch the first one. Like, I'll, go, I'll go download it. I'll, I'll go download it. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's I watch good. the first one every so often. I'm just like, oh, I just got to yeah. remember. Nice. Yeah, just, and the thing is, is watching these two trailers. It's a, it's a good. I think the first trailer gave us kind of this, this good build up. It's like, oh, this looks, this looks good. And this trailer gives us this looks good now here is and well, fun. Well, there are a couple of shots in there. I want to frame by frame. I want to see because they go through some of the they they jam the clips together so fast. Well, there's there, there's certain things I want to stop and look at. You know, so well, like Joker's diving off of like a diving, high like yeah. thing, and then he's like holding Harley in pulling water, her out of the, out of a, out out of a, a pool, pool of crap, or something, yeah. and like the makeup is coming off. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, something like so. I'm, I'm like, it looked amazing. And then just the amount of action that is in this movie with the helicopter flying between the buildings and firing off all those missile things. No, no, no. That, that was a helicopter shooting off uh, uh, chaff, uh, chaff yeah, flares. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's like it. This this movie looks to be really, really well done. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, you know, this. You know, there was that rumor a while ago that people were like, "Oh, the DC movies is going to suck." Or, "Oh, they're not going to allow to make jokes in their movies." Oh, well, oh, look, they don't get it. Okay, well. Obviously, between the Batman Super Material news trailer, it's like oh, they're willing to be as jokey as they want to be. So I don't care. What uh, was it? What's her name? Who plays Harley? Uh, Margot Margot Margo Robbie. Margot Robbie. Yeah. The last shot you really see of her is her bending over. <laughs> very nice. Uh, very. It's very what nice. they do. It's very. I told Ryan I want the hot toy of her. Like the second they it solicit looks- it, order it. Yeah, that that's a that's a really good trailer. It needs to be watched again. Ryan's out, but I, I'm going to be watching it again. That's oh, for that sure. t-shirt, that's damn sure good. what Daddy's little girl or whatever. That t-shirt's going to go. Uh. You see that on women <laughs> everywhere. And through the magic of the internet, we are now going to pause again. What? to watch the first Wonder Woman footage nice. that just went online? So fucking hell, this podcast. Hold on a second. And once again, we are back. Um, yeah, like. To them, it's nothing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, Wonder Woman uh, footage just went online here. Uh, again, we're West Coast, so we're kind of a little, you know, we, we're not East we're Coast. But, the party, but we get it when it goes online, and I'm going to go... party later. <laughs> I'm going to go home and watch all this. This is Wonder Woman footage from the Jeff Johns and Kevin Smith hosted um, uh, uh, Justice League. Uh, the DC Presents Dawn of Justice D- Dawn special. Of, Dawn of the Justice League, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, very early footage. Only you know some of those scenes look pretty finished to me. Um, well, the thing is, is a lot of it, a lot of the scenes that we saw were finished because it was. Um, I mean, they were very kind of low CG scenes. Yeah, they were. Um, no, yeah, exactly. Very little. You know, they were special they were effects. A couple fight scenes. Um, very. I mean, we got a f- little bit of a snippet of a couple of scenes from. Um, we got a couple the scenes Batman, from Batman, Superman, Batman v Superman, and then we saw some scenes from the uh, looks like the Wonder Woman movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, the, yeah, no, so. most almost all of that was from the Wonder Woman. Yeah, solo yeah. Film. But the thing yeah. is, is a lot of those a lot of those scenes that we got were simple production scenes. Like yeah, they're not. You know, super, it's not. It's not like it, it's not this huge battle or this epic. You know, kind of. CG moment in a film. It was, no. It's very down to earth. It looked like she was driving off from Bruce Wayne's car. That's Batman. That was Batman yeah, v Superman. Yeah, that's Batman v Superman. That, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's already been shown. Yeah, before. yeah. Because they're. I mean, they're establishing in this that she's been around for a while. I mean, they. No, well, World, uh, so, so the original World War. World War One. Right. Original is World War Two in the comics. This is World War One. Yeah. Yeah. Which. Um, I, I I'm, I'm I'm perfectly fine with that because like why would World War Two be the one that that brings him out like World War One makes sense well, World it's War One would bring out would bring out Wonder Woman because I mean it's I mean she's like 
In, it says in it's the, a, it's, they're here to protect. It's a they're world to protect men, and it's the first world, world war. war. Yeah, so yeah. it makes sense if that's when the Amazons come on. I don't, I don't mind that stuff Man. like that. You know what this means? Does not bother Wonder me. Woman. She's really into younger guys. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm just curious about which storyline, which which origin story they're going to go with. I mean, her her, her whether it's going to be she's she's uh, part she's part god, which is part uh, Greek hmm. god. You know, uh, I think Zeus was her father uh, in one origin. Another one is she's made from clay. She's come from clay. Yeah. yeah so. No, I think I think they'll stick with the original with the clay. With the clay. I, I, well, maybe not. I mean, maybe they'll use the new she origin. Could, I mean, if she's a demigod, if she's a you know, yeah. she could very easily be around since World War II. I, mean, I just World like that, that Steve Trevor's in it. Yeah, 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 Chris yeah. Pine. Is, Chris Pine and Steve Trevor is awesome, and they could easily move him into the Justice League movie because mm-hmm. if they want well, to the give thing, him, what, was he? I mean, was he in Batman V? Is he slated in that? I don't, or? I don't know. I don't think so. He but might, he might have a cameo wait, in it. The, so the 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 talk is Chris Pine is going to be exactly. He's going to play uh, Colonel Trevor in World War One and right. Steve Trevor in the modern day. He's going to oh, be he's gonna like play, he's going to like to play his own grand his own grand great grandfather oh, or, or great okay. great grandfather okay. or something right so he's going to play both roles at the, at least that is the that's the talk it'd be a waste to have him in one movie right and not be not be Steve Trevor yeah yeah um, so he can be Colonel Trevor and then modern day hey I you know I'm part of the DEO or I'm part of uh, you know I'm part of uh, Argus Argus or whatever right I mean. He could be. He'll be the I'm modern the Steve Trevor to the Justice League. Yeah, he'll be. He'll be the I, modern and I, Steve and Trevor. I'm, I'm in love with Wonder Woman. So I, uh, yeah, that you know, it looks good. It, it looks. Um, you're probably going to get more comparisons to Men of Steel than you are Batman v Superman or Suicide Squad. It's it definitely the, has the that that like kind of washed footage was, over. The footage was washed dark. Yeah, yeah, washed um, dark. Yeah. But but again. Think about the first Captain America movie, and then think about when he comes to the modern day. It's kind of got that Wizard of Oz sort yeah, of like yeah. transition. Yeah. Well, it, it's what they're doing is they're kind of giving – they're using the the tone of the colors to kind of show that this is the past. Right, right. Whereas now we are in the present. It's a little bit more yeah. – you know, you, movies have come a long way in, in being able to give us – um, different kind of lenses to see things, right? Like World War One could be a lens, World War Two could be a completely different lens. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think in uh, I think in Cap's flashbacks are always dark. Yeah. Well, no, in yeah. uh, in Wolverine Origins when they're doing that montage at the beginning, which yeah. was amazing, where Wolverine and Sabretooth are going through all the different wars, they they slightly change each kind of yeah era like the just how you see that era with the like the lens that the camera's using right 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 um so i mean great great tool for storytelling um if you pull it off really well so yeah i i'm i'm I'm, my only concern still is i have nothing against a character that has an accent because she absolutely should have an accent but we still have not heard wonder woman speak and it's weird that in the Batman v Superman footage and this, they have no point in her speaking. I, I'm you worried. I, Are you I, worried? I'm not worried that she has an accent and it sounds weird. I'm worried that studio thinks she has an accent and it sounds weird. And like they get a dubber or they like I don't want anything. Well, like you, know, gonna, you don't want her to sound like. Did you bring her to this party? No, yeah. Gal Gadot doesn't have that. She has a re- no. very nice voice, and it she worked. Does. And it worked in Fast and Furious. And I got a feeling they're going to use her same voice in this one. It but might why be- wouldn't they have her? Who talk? knows? I mean, she hasn't had the need to talk right now. And Wonder Woman is more action than talk. So uh, I mean, that's, she's that's a, you true. Know, I mean, but she it's- she's the one in the DC universe who has no qualms about killing people. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, they're, she, they're, that sword is not just for show. All right, she stabbed people in the heart oh, with speaking it. Speaking of swords, <laughs> katana sword. Uh-huh. Oh, oh yeah, that looks good. Trailer, the soul oh. taker. I was like, <laughs> all right, we're switching up to Suicide <laughs> Squad again, but katana sword. And yeah, yeah that was really cool. When she, so twenty twenty two Outsiders movie, uh-huh, maybe <laughs> could be. So that's going to be a good couple of years, man. David, oh. David o- a- 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 Ayers, Ayers, a- Ayers, yeah. Ayers, dude, please make a, an Outsiders movie, please. Uh-huh. <laughs> I hope Batman with, and the Outsiders. No, just <laughs> Outsiders. Just I don't care. With that squad trailer, someone's already got their finger right over the Suicide Squad two button, just going, "Come on, August! Come on, August!" <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and not early. I mean, again, it's early footage; it's hard to tell. But the Wonder Woman stuff looks solid. She looked good. Yeah. So, 
No, it looked. I like. I mean, it. It looks to be like a an origin story, which you know, if they follow in the vein of good origin stories and follow kind of the format of Batman Begins, then I think it's it, it has a great potential. Yeah, you know. So. Oh, I heard they uh, uh, cast Hippo- uh, Hippolyta. Yeah, her, her mother. I, I forget her name. Uh, it's the it's the actress who was the the who was in uh, Gladiator. She was the the, the sister in Gladiator. Uh, yeah, I, God, I don't know I her name, but yeah, she, yeah. I don't know her name, but it works. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. It looks mm-hmm. good. So, all right, we're gonna wrap up here. We got a couple, a couple of very very cool questions here. Let's let's some of these up. Um, Julian on Twitter says, "When are we getting the Dark Hawk reboot that we all deserve?" Um, well, you know, uh, I'd be down with that at any point. I love Dark Hawk. Uh, I expect no time soon. <laughs> On the Dark Hawk uh, front, Dark Jesus Hawk was Christ. a new warrior. I will say I've been catching up with some of the Marvel books. As you know, I kind of get a couple in a can and read them all at once. Conscious of Champions is number four. Okay. He gets a couple... In a can, or Come he's on. reading a couple in the can. I get a couple or... in the can. I get a couple. I hold on to a couple, and then I read through a bunch of issues at once. Okay. Um, Conscious of Champions is number four. It's mom- well, Toby. I'll, I'll say Toby's man, Night Thrasher, in the back. Now it looks maybe like Night Thrasher's brother, the stupid one from the stupid X Men fake X Men series. <laughs> but I'll take any Night Thrasher. I'll take any new warrior. Okay, so he rides a skateboard. So Night Thrasher is kind of coming back a little bit. So we'll see how that works out. Um, but yeah, Darkhawk. It's a good ass character. He's gonna team up with Speedball. I wish. <laughs> this is from Talon. I'll let you guys answer this first. Um, right. If you guys could build your own four character DC or Marvel team, who would be on the roster? Not a pre existing team rehashed. Four characters to build your perfect team. What are you playing? Hero clicks? Sure. Oh, uh, God. Team? Yeah, four characters that you really like that you think should be on a, on a team. Go ahead, Brock. You can go first. I'm. Blanking, you're blanking because it's like it's outsiders. No, so who can I throw on? Who can I no. take off the outsiders? No. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. Hold on, this is a this is an interesting question. Give me a moment. I would okay. First off, I'd have to start with Booster Gold would have to be on the team. Okay. Uh, then I would say you would have to throw in. Um, that's that's the time stuff. So I'm gonna, Booster I'm gonna, Gold's I'm gonna, comedy relief. I'm going to ground myself a little bit. I'm going to put uh, Geoforce, not the Green Packers Geoforce. I'm going to put the orange and, and yellow one. Okay. Um, and then I got just I have to get some top tier talent in there to bring you know people into the the series. So I, I'd probably have to say Harley Quinn. Throw her on there. Okay. And then uh, you want to? I don't know. There's four random characters, exactly. That have no like, connection. Like, well, because what is it? It's the Trinity, and then add one. And like, if you're doing DC, and then I guess I would throw on. Hmm, this to... isn't fucking Secret Defenders, okay? This is let's, let's, let's get a real team. Okay, you here. know what? You know what? I'll get crazy with you. The God Bat. God Batman man. in the fucking Mobius chair. That's the other person on the team. <laughs> All right. Good, so fucking good, good, take good, it. God good, bat. Good, good plan. God, God bat. Good plan. God. Uh, Captain Marvel. Shazam. That's the one. That's my first one. That's okay. my first choice. Um, let's see. Uh, I would go with um, Hulk. Wait. Oh, we, you mi- no, you're mixing. You're, you're mixing mix. teams I thought there. you can mix. No. You said DC and Marvel. DC or Marvel oh. separate. Oh. Well, just F. Yeah. All right. Um, Not all right. so easy. Is it? Shut up. Well, it um, says if you could be on the four character DC or Marvel team, who would be on the? Uh, I mean, I mean, whatever. If you want to mix it, that's fine. That's all right. I was no, going to no, do no, one no, of no, each, no, but no, no, no. I'll stick with it. I'll stick with it. I'll stick with it. All right. I'm going to go with. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Captain Marvel, Shazam, um, uh, Batman. Not even God Bat. I'll just do Batman. <laughs> I'm taking God. At a, at a strategist, as a strategist. Okay. Um. Let's see who's not not part of the team. Um, Could have some sort of theme here. What's your what's the theme of this team? Plastic Man, <laughs> <laughs> the most the most powerful. Oh, look, God! I just said that. The most powerful being in the DC universe, Plastic Man. And um, wow, does he have to be a hero or can he be a villain? Be whatever you I want. At this point, at this point, it if I can't have Hulk, doesn't matter. If I can't have Hulk, I want Doomsday. Apparently, at this point, it doesn't matter. So, <laughs> well, Doomsday is like some scrawny kid now. So, huh? 
the Doom not, not Doom Kid. No, that's, that's Doom. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> that some, book had the best title for it. That's Doom. Some, that's some kid that's in the uh, quarter bin right now. So <laughs> why don't why don't I show you how it's done? Why I'm about to punch you in the why face. Why don't I show you how it's done? Because the team has to be right. The team has to be Wally West, Flash, right? Cosmic Boy from the Legion of Superheroes. Um, okay, so random, random. No, no. What is the theme here? There's a theme. You have Flash, you have Cosmic Boy from Legion of Superheroes. Um, fuck, I just, I just totally blanked on my Good, number three. Good, I'm my, glad on you my blanked. Three pick. Uh, I just totally blanked on my number three. Oh, no. Was it Baz? No, no. What happened to that guy? Wildfire. He's in Green Lantern Corps. Oh, is he in Core? Wild, I, I've, I've been catching up with that. No, 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 no. Man, I, man, I, I'm now Doctor Strange. Sounds stupid. Uh, uh, no, it's, um, no. Slowbo. Now I sound, <laughs> now I sound as bad as you guys. Adam, totally, Adam, I, Adam Strange. I totally just blanked on my number Animal three. Animal Man. No, because my number four, of course, is Rip Hunter. Oh, I'm sorry, Booster Gold and Rip Hunter. Those are my number four. All time travelers. It's a time traveling team. That's my team. Okay, DC Legends. Yeah, that's my time traveling team. Whatever. Just copy the TV show. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so Booster Gold or... Uh, Rip Hunter! Yeah, Rip Hunter's in that. That's it. That means there has to be a Booster Gold. Not necessarily. Oh, my God. Wait, with Booster Gold, do you get skeets? You skeets, can. Skeets, that, that's skeets. a half character. That's a half character. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna every, every other question I think on here was um, have we seen the Suicide Squad trailer? So, Ultimate villains team, so, Mister Mixelplick, Doomsday. Jesus, <laughs> we're going to go and Joker end this episode Luther. now. Thank you for everyone. Uh, thank, thank you for you, everyone. Thank you for everyone. Thanks for the pizza. Thank you to everyone for listening to this podcast. Of course, I have to thank our our top tier backers. On Patreon, that's Albert Soy. His app plant everywhere on iTunes. Make sure you check that out. Do we have an Android? Jody Lawson I'll take at that uh, Canon, the Triad Comics anthology at triadcomicstudio.com and Manoa Place. Uh, don't forget to do whatever he does because <laughs> I have nothing to pimp. He hasn't given you anything. <laughs> he just donated, so it's fine. That's perfectly he fine. He just too. started. He just. Uh, I mean, for, for for the month of December. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank so, you. So there you go. Uh, and 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 that's it. Be sure to visit us at geekbox.net, and uh, you can listen to all our episodes there as He's well as iTunes. To open up his transcript. Can rate and review rate and review us on iTunes. Have uh, you looked forms, at any of them? Yeah, whatever. Can you forms, please get some? Sure. I'd like to have an episode where we you go over some. Check of this on your stuff. phone right now. I'm sure you can look I'm it up. Gonna, you can't look on your phone. It's Apple forums at geekbox.net and the Geekbox and Comic Conspiracy Facebook group. That's where you can uh, talk to all our other listeners and talk about the Suicide Squad trailer. Uh, digital.comicsconspiracy.biz go on there and buy all digital comics from us to work on any app uh, that you can read uh, comicsology stuff on patreon.com slash comic conspiracy that's where you can go donate some money to us conspiratorbrock.com that's Brock's blog check that out uh, infinite long box podcast and wanderers in the fourth dimension podcast those are Charlie's other podcast he's probably recording one of those tonight or tomorrow Etsy.com slash shop slash Leanne Hill Art. That's my wonderful wife's art. Uh, uh, Etsy shop. You can go on there and buy all sorts of she stuff did and a commissions. Jessica Jones and a Ray from yep. Star Wars. So her Star Wars there. one just went up. Really so nice. I already sold one of those. So that's good. Uh, Twitter. I'm Ryan Higgins. Ryan Brox Brock Sager. Bryce, who should be back on next week, is Larson Bryce. Toby is Toby XI. Don't forget to go on and tell him. I uh, hope he recovers from his surgery. Give him well wishes. And Charlie is soon. Insanity in Chaos. Jim is LD Exterminator. Go send messages to all of us on there and add us. Comedy Button, uh, Geekbox, uh, Good Job Brain, and the All Talk Podcast. Those are their podcasts on our little network here. Make sure you uh, check us all out and listen to us every week for all your comic book and what uh comics and comedy and geek culture geek topics and other stuff you stuff. can also order comics through us other stuff and stuff directly we do do mail order we, right we do you yeah, if we do subscriptions so multiple subscriptions we do if mail order in states like wisconsin or where they thump bibles and there's barely a, <laughs> there's more Christian bookstores around you than comic book stores. We can ship to you. We absolutely can. Or if you're in the downtown Manhattan and you just don't like leaving your house and you don't want to order from Midtown, <laughs> we can also ship to you. It doesn't matter where you are. You ship overseas also. It's oh, geez, very expensive, but we can if you want to pay like double your order in shipping. Yeah, whatever yeah. your order is. Okay. And the USPS in just increased prices. I think yesterday this, or no, today. No, this weekend. Yeah. So it, like uh, priority envelopes went up from five oh. Five to like six something. 
for the envelope. That's brutal. So there you go. Um, we can ship to you. We're not Amazon. Sorry, but we can ship to you if you really want to. Support the us. The Suicide Squad trailer is tr- trending. Right yeah. Now. Oh, yeah. It's been trending the whole time we've been recording. That's why I got up to watch it. So, I All right, guys. I started a joke. We're going to end this podcast right now. Thank you, guys. And we'll catch you next week. <laughs> <laughs>